Hey, you're listening to Clumsy Theosis, a Catholic podcast that explores topics within the Catholic faith to help us deepen our spiritual lives, own our relationship with the Lord, and strengthen His church. Hello, my name is Rochelle Lucero, and I'm the host of Clumsy Theosis. By the time that you hear this episode, I will have taken the last week off so that I could get ahead a few episodes. And the reason that I did this is because, drumroll please, I have set up a weekly email that will email you the latest episode on the day that that episode is released. And I needed to get ahead with my episodes so that I could coordinate them with the emails. Now, this is huge, and I'm really excited about this for a couple of reasons. First, I know from personal experience that sometimes the apps that we listen to our podcasts on, they don't always send us a notification that a new episode was released. Or we run into the situation where the app freezes somehow, and it doesn't even show that a new episode is even listed or available, and we have to uninstall the app, reinstall it, and there it is. And you can bypass all of this by having this email sent directly to your inbox and it'll notify you that a new episode is out. Also, we have friends and family that we know would really like this podcast, but they aren't familiar with the podcast scene. And for them, they can just subscribe to my email list and have it come straight to their inbox. And lastly, I have new developments that I'm working on. And this is one of the three that I mentioned in the last episode, but the other two. One of them has to do with merchandise and the other one has to do with a new donation system with this reward program. And my email subscribers are going to be the first people to know about any of these developments and the first people to jump on and to adopt and take advantage of whatever it is that I'm putting out there for you guys first. Now, speaking of donations, I want to thank Richard. This show is only possible because of donations from listeners like yourself. And Richard is our most recent donor. So I thank him. I think all of you listeners should also thank Richard. But I want to invite all of you, if you have found any benefit in the Clumsy Theosis podcast or enjoyment, please consider making a donation by going to clumsytheosis.net and then clicking the word donate in the menu. But back to the emails, I'm super protective over my own personal account. So just want you to rest assured that I will respect your inbox and any notifications that I'll be sending out, those will be compiled in the weekly email along with the episode. I'm including a link for you down in the show notes and it will say email list sign up. You click on that link and enter your email and that's it. Now the show notes can be found where you would read the description for, your, for this episode. Know that you can also listen to the podcast on whatever app that you use, but getting it in the email will be a a way to notify you of the new episode as well as any new developments. All right, so on to today's topic, identity. So the week that I'm recording this episode, we just saw two current events that left my head spinning. We had Michelle Williams win a Golden Globe and use her acceptance speech as a platform to champion her decision to have an abortion in order to be successful in life. And that just made my heart so sad. Also, our nation held its breath. I don't know about you, but I was holding my breath while the president deliberated whether or not we would declare war on Iran. I mean, 2020 is already looking crazy. Welcome, everybody. Who knows what's going to happen the rest of the year? Now, I don't typically comment on current affairs. That's not my shtick. But I mention these things because they made me think. And they made me think about the evil one, about the enemy and his lies and manipulation over the children of God, and his desire for our destruction. And I was heated when I thought of this, and I had that righteous anger. But with that righteous anger came a spirit of conviction and empowerment. Because I remembered that in 1 John chapter 4, it is written that he who is in me is greater than he who is in the world right? He who is in me is the Lord. By virtue of my baptism, the Lord is in me. And he who is in the world is Satan, who is referred to as the prince of this world. And we see this in scripture. And I'm going to put some scripture references about the devil in the show notes for you if you're curious about reading what they say. And I'm doing this because in my experience, when people start talking about the devil, it's not uncommon for faithful Catholics and Christians who are steeped in their faith, they tune out. Or they even think of Satan and spiritual warfare with an air of superstition. 
And I think not only is that crazy, I think it's very unwise. I mean, it is true that you don't want to go looking for the enemy under every rock. And there is also merit in holding the view that we shouldn't give him too much credit. Because, hey, Jesus wins. We know that. But I want to put forward that it is very important for us to know how he operates so that we can proactively, not defensively, but proactively combat his tactics. Because he does, and he is operating in the world and in our lives, and most of the time, we do not realize it. Because here's the thing about Satan that we know and we forget, and we forget this all the time. We forget that he's a liar and he's an accuser. And in fact, that is what his name means in Greek and Hebrew, to slander, to accuse. And that is exactly what he does. He accuses us. He takes a fail of ours or a lack of ours big or small, right? Because we all have them because we are not perfect. And he takes them and he blows them up and he conflates them. And then what he does is he attacks our identity by accusing us of being something less than who we are, because that's his end game, identity theft. He does not want us to live out our identity as children of God. Now, can he really steal our identity? No, but we can believe him. And in doing so, we deny our own identity and its power. Now, the point of this episode is to find the why behind the what so that we can address it. And the what is today's topic, our identity as children of God. Also connected to that is the enemy's attack on our identity. So we want to look at the why. Why do we fall for this? It's because we come into agreement with the enemy's accusations. Now, one of my good friends, she's a prayer powerhouse, and she's the one who introduced me to this language of agreement. I remember being a group text, right? It was me, her, and a few of our other friends, and I was speaking blessings over one of our mutual friends in this group text. And this friend of mine, she chimes in as soon as I send out my text message. She chimes in and says, I come into agreement with that. And I had never seen or heard anything like that. And I was like, ooh, I like that. Because here's the thing, when we come into agreement with words that are spoken to us, spoken about us, or even the words that we think, we are declaring them over our lives and giving them authority. And as I say that, I realize that that can seem kind of like some new agey mumbo jumbo, but there are at least 100 scripture verses, there's probably a lot more, but 100 scripture verses about the power of words in our lives and in the world. And I love Proverbs 15, 4, that says, gentle words bring life and health. That's big, to bring life and health with gentle words. That's huge. But then it goes on to say, a deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. And that's what the enemy does. He has a deceitful tongue and he's trying to crush our spirit. So when we agree with the accusation that he's putting forward, we are giving him authority over those areas in our life. And it's so easy for us to agree with him Because he's tricky and he always presents us with something that is true, something that is a fact and it's evidence that we can't fight because it is an actual fact that happened. So here's an example and I think this is relatable. When it comes to friendship, I have come to a point in my life where if I want to spend any quality time with my friends, I have to schedule something out with them at least two weeks in advance because that's just the place where we're all at. We're all at different stages and places in our life with different responsibilities and timetables. And we have to be very intentional about getting together and spending time. On more than one occasion, I've seen a picture on social media. And I know that people have experienced this also, where I see my friends out together and I've had these thoughts that turn into accusations. At first, I'll think, oh, it looks like they had a good time. I wish I could have gone. But then almost within that same thought, I have these paranoid questions and accusations that come up with inside of me. Things like, why wasn't I invited? Do they not really enjoy my company? Maybe I'm not really considered part of the group. I'm more of an outsider. Then comes the true real world facts that actually happened in history and Satan is bringing them to the forefront of my mind to present them to me as evidence. Because I'll recall that 
There are other times that I haven't been invited to things by these friends or by other friends who aren't even part of this group. And then I'll remember that one time that I said something to so-and-so and and I'm pretty sure that I offended them. So with this evidence, the only logical conclusion that I can come to in that moment is they always forget me. There's something wrong with me. And then these things right here become the I statements. Then that means that overall, I'm forgettable. I'm unimportant. I'm defective, I'm boring, and I have nothing to offer. So because this evidence, the evidence that I have been left out of things before and I've offended my friends with my opinion or the way that I said something before, right? This is evidence. And that evidence is true, right? And if it's true, then everything else, all of these other thoughts, these I statements, they're also true. That's the way that he packages his accusations. And this is garbage because this is an attempt at identity theft because there is truth mixed in with his lies. This is a key point that we need to remember is that his lies, they go too far because they reach into our identity, right? That is like flashing red sign, alert, alert. This is not from God when it starts to become those I statements. But we agree with these I statements so easily. When in fact, the only I statement that is actually true is that I am a beloved child of God. Now that we've seen his game plan, we can act offensively. We can act boldly. We're not defending ourselves. No, we are acting offensively because we have the power to do that as children of God and we can cut him off at the pass. And here's how we can do that. First, we need to begin to heal our own perception about our identity and claim the one that has been given to us by the Father. By the time you hear this, last week, yeah, the last last week's gospel will have been on the baptism of our Lord. And what did the Father say to Jesus? He said, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Now, maybe your priest mentioned this in his homily, maybe not, but this is exactly what our Father said to us at our baptism. He called you my beloved son, my beloved daughter, and he meant it. And he still means it no matter what you've done, what you're doing, what you still will do in the future. Now, when I was baptized, I was a baby. And at that time in my life, all I did was eat, sleep, cry, poop, and maybe I giggled here and there, right? I did absolutely nothing to deserve or to earn the father's love to be his child. I was his beloved daughter just because he said so. And he says that about all of us, no matter what. So here's what I'm asking you to do. For one week, meditate on the baptism of our Lord. And when the Father speaks, imagine him saying those words to you. Now, if any thoughts or feelings come up with inside you that are contrary to what the Father is saying, if you receive anything that is not loving, patient, kind, or gentle, that's not from God. And if that happens, give all of those to the Father individually and ask him to tell you the truth about these contradicting messages. Second, we need to watch those I am statements. I've found that the easiest way for me to do that is to separate actions and events from my identity. So say I messed up or I sinned or I failed at something, no matter how big, no matter how small. I stop myself from believing the lie that the enemy is going to try to force down my throat because that's going to happen. The accusation that says, because I did this, I failed here, I sinned over there, or I'm not as good as so-and-so in this area, you know, those are, according to the accuser, those are going to mean that I'm unlovable, I'm dirty, I'm not worthy of being listened to, I'm not enough, I'm a failure, and on and on. But when I acknowledge my sin, my behavior, my performance, or even someone's criticism of my performance or of me as a person, I acknowledge that these are things that happened and then I declare that I am still a child of God and that I am beloved by him. I think if you adopt that habit, you will experience what I've also experienced. Once I started making that a regular routine in my day to day, I started applying this to my neighbors. And when you do this, you'll notice that you stop calling people names, you stop labeling people, you stop identifying them by their sin or their faults, you stop blaming them. I don't know if I've said that already, because you're going to start to uphold and reverence the fact that the Father loves them 
and counts them as his own. I am eager for all of you to grow in your identity. In fact, I'm depending on all of you to do just that because you can't become who you were created to be if you don't know and you don't live out who you are as a beloved child of God. Same thing goes for me. And you know what? I need your unique brand of sainthood to exist in the world, just like you need mine to exist. All right, so I hope this episode stirred some fire within you. I know that I'm really pumped. I feel like super empowered. And I want to ask you really quickly, if you've liked this episode, if you would please uh, share it with a friend. Also, quick reminder, uh, don't forget to sign up for my email list so you can receive the episodes and the insider information directly in your inbox. And that link is down in the show notes. So until next week, you can contact me on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter at Clumsy Theosis. Please reach out to me. Tell me what you'd like to hear me speak about, um, what questions you might have. And you can even tell me what you'd like to see on those social media channels because I do all of this for you. I mean, I enjoy it myself. There's some of me and my personality and flair and flavor out there, but I do it for you because I want you to grow. I want me to grow. I want us to grow as a community in our identity so that we can transform the world. So let me know what you want and what you need. All right, everybody. Peace out. Thank you for tuning in to Clumsy Theosis. I'm so happy that you've been able to hang out. If you want to learn more about Clumsy Theosis, you are more than welcome to visit my website, clumsytheosis.net. From clumsytheosis.net, you will also be able to contact me if you're interested in booking me as a speaker or if you're just feeling generous and you'd like to make a donation. Remember that together we can transform the world by letting the Lord transform us.